Example number two, graph from a linear equation using integers. So, we've got a definition here for equation. Two expressions that have the same value and are joined with an equal sign. So for example, 2x plus 3, that's an expression. 10 is also an expression, and they're joined by an equal sign. That's one example. Another one here, y is equal to x minus 5. x minus 5 is an expression, so is y and they're joined by an equal sign. So these are equations. Now these variables maybe don't have specific meaning, so it's not necessarily a formula in this instance. It depends on how it's being used. Use the linear equation y equals negative 3x plus 4 to complete the following steps. So we need to make a table of values. We can use positive and negative integers and zero values for x. Remember, integers are any negative number, zero, and any positive number without decimals. So you do not know what x describes. So we use the integer values for x to try and figure out some data for the table. To find y, we substitute each of the values for x into the equation as given. So we've been given some x values to work with, and that's a good starting point. We've got zero, we go a couple below, and then a few above as well. So what this is, is the workspace to try and figure out what these numbers are. So for negative 2, we make x equal negative 2 and substitute that into the original equation, y equals negative 3x plus 4. So x becomes negative 2, negative 3 times negative 2, that gives you positive 6, and then plus 4, so y equals 10, which is what's already indicated here. So that's for one of them. Negative 1. We substitute in our negative 1 for x, and we do the same thing all over again. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, and then we're going to add 4 to that, so we get 7. And then for x equals 0, same process, substitute 0 in. Negative 3 times 0 becomes 0. Add 4 to it, and you get 4. And at this point, you probably start to see a pattern. It's going down by 3s. But we'll continue this work just to confirm. So x equals 1, substitute it in. Negative 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Add 4 to that and you end up with positive 1. So 1 and 1 is a point on the graph. Test for 2. Substitute in 2 for x. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Plus 4, you're going to end up with negative 2. And then for x equals 3, substitute it in. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Add 4 to that and you end up with negative 5. So yes, the pattern continues. This goes down by 3 each time, where this keeps going up by 1. So we've got two different patterns going on here for our x and our y. But it's consistent for each variable, so that tells us that it's going to be a straight line when we graph it. All right, graph the ordered pairs. That's part B. So, negative 2 and 10 was our first one. So we start at the origin, negative 2, and then up to positive 10. The next point is negative 1 and 7. Start at the origin, negative 1, and then 7 is halfway between 6 and 8. 0 and 4, so we don't have to go side to side on this one, we're just going to go straight up to 4. Then 1 and 1, 1 and 1 is halfway between 0 and 2. 2, negative 2, 2 and negative 2 goes right there. And then lastly, 3 and negative 5, which is halfway between negative 4 and negative 6. And as you can see, once again, that is forming a straight line. And I'm just going to draw that straight line all the way through, just so that we can see that. So there is our graph with the ordered pairs. Find the y value in the ordered pair 11 comma y. So x is equal to 11. Well, that's going to be way off the graph. 
So it's going to be way down here somewhere. The point negative or 11y tells you that the x value is 11. So that means we can substitute 11 into our formula to calculate it. We don't have to necessarily use the graph. So we've got our original formula. We're going to substitute 11 in for x. So the negative 3 times 11 is negative 33. And then we need to add 4 to that. So that's going to give us negative 29. So the value of the y-coordinate then is negative 29. And therefore the ordered pair is 11, comma, negative 29. So yes, you could theoretically figure it out based on the graph, but you've got an equation here that you can use. So that's going to give you more, precise, more precision and probably going to be faster than trying to make the graph big enough and then find the exact point. So you can use this equation to calculate it precisely. So that is that. Next up is another show you know. Give it a go.